Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Teague's Exotic Emporium down here at the corner of Vanguard Avenue and Tower Street. This weekend only, we got a special running on bows. Yes, sir, bows. We got bows for everybody. Bows that wall hack, bows that pack a punch, bows that are a little toxic, and bows with an electrifying personality. So come on down to Teague's Exotic Emporium and ask for me, Larry Legolas, to get the best rate on a new bow for you for your next GM or dungeon. Come on by today and remember, at Teague's Exotic Emporium, I bows will leave you saying bow wow <laughs> guys i gotta talk to whoever keeps booking these ads so bad anyway since i put out the best pve exotics you can buy from the monument to lost lights video i've gotten a lot of comments about what bow is better for this or that or why wasn't trinity ghoul in that video i understood the assignment <laughs> I understood the assignment. So today we answer the question of which is the best exotic bow in Destiny 2 for PVE. Coming in at number five, we have the best option to dodge battle eye, Wish Ender. This kinetic bow available from completing an exotic quest was first introduced in season four alongside the Forsaken expansion. This bow is known for its intrinsic ability to do what most really good Crucible players could do last season. But oddly, those same players are nowhere to be seen this season. And uh, I wonder why. It's exotic perk Queen's Wrath states, while aiming down sights with a fully drawn bow, enemies behind walls are highlighted. To be honest, this is the highlight of this bow and there aren't really many other appealing factors. It's other perk Broadhead adds that the bow can overpenetrate multiple targets, but in high level PVE activities, I doubt you're gonna be filming your next COD quickscope bow montage. After using this bow, I did notice the two separate damage numbers you get from the arrow entering and exiting a target. That said, the damage was disappointing to say the least. Wish Ender also didn't have much to offer in terms of ad clear unless you were hitting collats for your next phase tryout video. At the end of the day, Wish Ender has wall hacks and doesn't even have the decency to give us a bonus aimbot. Hopefully, a catalyst will introduce another function to this bow to make it somewhat viable. Next up at number four, we have the bow that desperately needs a mint, Leviathan's Breath. The only heavy bow in the game, Leviathan breath was first introduced in season eight with a pretty fun exotic quest now available from the monument to lost lights leviathan's breath is a big damage dealing monster that comes with some pretty unique perks many previous seasons including the one we're in right now season of the lost feature the artifact mod overload bow well leviathan's breath exotic perk big game hunter states fires a massive heavy bolt that stuns unshielded combatants strong against unstoppable champions so similar to divinity ariana's vow bastion and a few other exotics it has a built-in champion mod before you ask no you cannot stack overload and unstoppable on the same exotic you sneaky devils i had the same idea and was like disappointed when i found out you couldn't have an unstoppable overload heavy bow that is looking to literally hit everything with the delete key we already have a terrifying exotic looking to delete everything including it seems the game files Leviathan's Breath also has another perk, Leviathan's Sigh, which states when fully drawn, the bolt creates a large concussive blast that knocks combatants back. The knockback effect is pretty noticeable and powerful, but does fall short in terms of effect when compared to something like blinding nades or slow. So what is it like to chew five gum? How it feels to chew five gum. Wait, no. Why isn't Leviathan's Breath higher up on this list? Three reasons. It's total damage output, it's ammo economy, and it's 4.5 year draw time. Seriously, I lost another half inch of my hairline each time I drew this bow back. So it's damage. I was hitting most yellow bar enemies in Legend and Master Lost Sectors for around 45,000 damage. And with a base ammo economy of 10 and a catalyst that only adds five more shots to reserves, I felt that in the current meta of fusions being crazy dominant, Leviathan's Breath Mint fell a bit behind in terms of viability. Hopefully in future seasons we get some crazy bow mods and it brings leviathan's breath it's much needed don't hate me for this joke breath of fresh air now where the list gets good and competitive number three is arguably the best crowd control option in the game and was probably number one in most of your minds when clicking on this video and despite being number three is still shockingly good and i swear these jokes are getting worse every video trinity ghoul is an arc bow first introduced in forsaken and it is available from random world drops trinity ghoul has always been known for being 
being an absolute crowd control monster with its intrinsic perk lightning rod precision kills grant the next shot chain lightning capabilities this perk combined with trinity ghoul's exotic perk split electron is where this becomes an absolute room clearing machine that many guardians turn to first fires an arrow that splits when released aiming down sights and full drawing the bow both decrease the spread so effectively in its base form you get a precision kill Everyone will tell you Trinity Ghoul is good in its base form, but disgusting after completing its catalyst. It adds the perk Forked Lightning, where Lightning Rod now triggers from any arc damage final blow. This changes everything about this bow. It goes from being a sort of stop start playstyle to a non stop ad shredder. The best way I've been able to take full advantage of Trinity Ghoul is in its masterwork form, getting any arc kill followed up by either shooting an ad in the middle of a crowd or by shooting the ground near a group of ads. Pairing Trinity Ghoul with any arc based subclass will mean that a masterwork trinity goal has a near 100 uptime for lightning rod the best combo i found was definitely bottom tree arc on warlock with crown of tempest abilities were almost always available and the trinity was a monster for clearing ads of course top arc and any arc subclass of your choice will also pair great now why isn't trinity goal further up on this list well in testing in higher level end game activities i didn't get the same level of crowd control i did in lower level content it felt like it did a bit of chain damage but didn't quite get the kill even on basic red bar ads when it came to damaging champions or powerful enemies trinity ghoul fell well short of the two remaining names on this list all that said for most activities this bow is super fun and very effective so don't let its position in this list dictate your feels towards trinity ghoul that said with the remaining two monsters on this list it will all make sense why trinity ghoul isn't as electrifying as it used to be now for the bit where the comments might take a turn for <laughs> Number two is Le Monarch, AKA Lemon Arc. And let's go through why it misses out at the top spot. Before everyone collectively thinks that me rating it at number two means I hate this bow or that it's trash, pump the brakes. Le Monarch is a great bow and it's definitely not trash, but misses in several key categories, but absolutely excels in a few that makes it a menace. So Le Monarch, AKA Today. was introduced in season five and is now available from the Monument to Lost Lights. This void bow is a very high damage dealing bow and is something that several pvp players have ptsd from for its exotic perk poison arrows arrows fired quickly after a full draw become poison arrows precision hits with poison arrows spread poisons to nearby enemies the splash damage from this is pretty good and the tick damage after hitting an enemy is similar to thorn lasting around eight seconds and can actually lead to stun locking overload champions which is honestly where this bow excels that said in my monument to lost lights video for pve link in the top right and in the description i ranked luminarch higher than another bow on this list so why isn't it number one well over the last few weeks of doing gms and other high level activities luminarch just falls a bit short on damage output and crowd control when compared to number one that said if the shields and whatever activity you're going into are void and there are overload champions then obviously luminarch is the best option available to you again everyone luminarch is a great option but the next option has become a monster i think at this point everyone knows exactly which bow sits at number one so let's get straight to it tiku's divination aka trinity ghoul but the hot boy summer version aka the bow that gives us the hacks that wish ender wished it had aka the bow that everyone looks at and goes tyqs tqs tqs tickles what did he say <laughs> was introduced in season 13 as the season pass weapon and is now available at the monument to lost lights if you purchase that season or the deluxe version of beyond light i feel like everyone's opinion on this bow when it first came out was like "Ooh, aimbot wait everyone in the crucible already has that so bye bye but after bows have come to the front of the meta this season tikus has been brought out and everyone is realizing that wait this thing is actually the best bow in the game and in my opinion it's not even close tikus is a monster due to its two perks sacred flame and causality arrows sacred flame states hip firing this weapon fires multiple tracking projectiles while causality arrows states arrows fired while aiming down sights cause sacred flames to instantly detonate crowd control and huge damage available right in its base form but tiku's catalyst is where damage starts to get insane causality quiver states perfectly drawn arrows that detonate sacred flames increase arrow damage striking targets unaffected by sacred flame instead refreshes causality arrows duration guys the increase to arrow damage is actually bonkers i looked it up after i noticed that the damage numbers were jumping up a ton after making the monuments video and the damage boost is broken like seriously broken scaling from 17 percent all the way up to a ridiculous this is not a typo 105 percent damage bonus
this. Oh, that's a lot of damage. This bow is actually viable to use against thicker chunk boy enemies such as champions rather than feeling like you have to switch to a special or heavy weapon. So great damage output, but what about crowd control? The tracking on the arrows is good. Like season 13, 14 crucible good. Like battle eye looking at you funny type good. This is important for a number of reasons. In high level activities, you can draw the bow, lock onto targets and jump behind cover, literally facing the other way and still hit those ads with the arrows. And by the way, they still go boom, even if Tiku's isn't the thing that kills them. In addition, anyone that did the hollowed layer GM a few weeks ago definitely has lingering PTSD in the form of those mini screebs. And this bow made that GM and several other GMs way too easy. The build potential around Tiku's is endless, tapping into both elemental well mods and warmind cells. A comprehensive best Tiku's build video is coming out real soon, so make sure you're subscribed to know when that one comes out. I call it the nuclear guardian build. So for Tiku's insane damage output, it's crazy crowd control potential, it's viability in high level end game content, and the fact that Battle Eye still hasn't clapped this thing, Tiku's divination sits comfortably atop the throne of the best exotic PVE bow in Destiny 2. So there it is, best exotic bows for PVE ranked. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, as well as your favorite build with these bows. If you found this video helpful for which bow you're going to be running next, hit that like button so this video gets pushed to even more guardians. Consider subscribing and triggering the bell to stay up to date on the next video, as well as when I go live here on YouTube doing trials, helps, and PVE activities with viewers. Join my Discord and find other guardians to team up with, shoot memes back and forth, and discuss builds. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I have been Teagues. You, as always, have been beautiful. Peace.